Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking about many Linux, uh, which is a standard for Python package distribution. And I'm going to show you some examples and how um, you would go about building your own many Linux wheels. Uh, so anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so in order to explain this, I have to, I guess, show you some examples of distributions in Python and talk a little bit about wheels. I don't want to go into too much detail, um, but I'll hopefully talk about it enough to explain what's going on. So I have, um, well, let's, let's start with this one since it's you know, the, the most straightforward. Um, this is a index page for a package called edit distance s, which I am the maintainer for. And you'll notice it has a bunch of different files for version 1.0.0. Uh, the first one we'll talk about is actually this last one down here, which is this tar.gz. This is what's referred to as a source distribution, um, and it just contains the source code of this package. It doesn't contain any compiled outputs. And above that, you'll see a bunch of wheel files. What you can think of when you see a wheel file is it's a zipped up chunk of the install state of a library. So this contains you know, not only any of the Python source that would get installed into your virtual environment, it also contains any of the shared object files. So, you know, .so files on Linux or, uh, you know, .dll, no, pyd uh, on, on Windows. Um, and you'll notice that they have a bunch of different names here. Uh, these are ABI3 wheels um, for these ones up here. Uh, these ones are not because PyPy does not yet have ABI3 compatibility. Um, but I did another video on ABI3. I will link that in the description, but that's not important for this discussion. What we're talking about today is many Linux. And you'll notice the rest of these wheels have a sort of platform name here. This one is Mac OS 10.14. This one is Win32. This is Win AMD64. Um, this section, including many Linux one, tells the installer tool, in this case, pip, it tells pip which platforms are suitable for this particular file. So in this one, it says anything newer than Mac OS X 1014 on, uh, you know, Intel 64-bit is or can install this file. And this one is saying, you know, 32-bit Windows uh, Python's can install this, and this is 64-bit Windows Python's can install this. And this one is a little bit special. It's saying many Linux one, which we'll talk about in a bit, <clears throat> which is the first the first iteration of the many Linux standard, uh, and again x86 64. So. 64-bit uh, Python. Um, now, the reason for this is, and if we were to build a wheel from source, let's talk about, for example, PyCurl, which does not have all of those many Linuxes or uh, you know, Mac OS wheels or any of that. It just has these .exes, which are special Windows installer things. And if I were to run pip wheel PyCurl, Oh, oops, yeah, we need to make a virtual env so that I have pip, right? I don't have global pip intentionally. Uh, pip wheel pie curl. Um, and you'll notice the file that it created here is actually different than any of those before. And this is because the default platform for Linux is Linux x86-64. And this is true on any Linux distribution. So not only like Ubuntu that I'm running now, but like Fedora or Red Hat or literally any um, <clears throat> Linux distribution is going to produce this platform, uh, or at least this platform here. It may have a different architecture if it's running a different processor type. Uh, but all Linuxes will make this platform type. And because every single Linux makes this same platform type, distributing binaries for this is not, uh, doesn't really work. Because this, you know, this binary here might link uh, distribution specific binaries I realized I said binary twice. Uh, it may link stuff that's specific to the operating system I'm running that would be different on a different version. So like in this case, um, if we unzip this, pycurl, um, and we LDD this pycurl.cpython, LDD will tell me which things are linked. You'll see that it's linking to, you know, very specific versions of particular libraries. Like this is the Kerberos authentication library and it's linking to version 26 of that. Now on Fedora, I might not have version 26 of that. And so this link will uh, fail on a Fedora system. So I can't just pick up this binary and stick it on another system. And so distributing a, you know, Linux x86-64 wheel isn't really super appropriate. 
Now I actually made a, uh, and this is what's called dynamic linking. So the, without explaining all of dynamic linking, um, this shared object file just stores the name of the, um, <clears throat> the executable that it wants to link to. So it, inside this file, it just says libsl.so.1.1. And the dynamic linker, when this gets imported at runtime, the dynamic linker looks up for a file named this in the link load paths. In this case, it finds that exact file name inside lib x86 64 linux gnu. And so at runtime, uh, the linker stitches in this third party library, and so then it can access any C level functionality from that. That's a TLDR of, of dynamic linking. But again, if you go to a different system, the dynamic linker is going to be like, I don't know what libssl.so.1.1 .1 is, for example, or I don't know what, uh, what was the one we had before, libkrb5.so.26. Like, it might not have that particular version on that system. And um, so the idea behind many Linux was to take, you know, dynamic linking isn't going to work across systems, so we need some other solution that's going to make this work. Um, and it's still also dynamically, dynamically, um, dynamically linking against libc, which is kind of the base C library that all C stuff kind of depends on. Um, and so the idea that many Linux had is that libc has very, very, very good backward compatibility guarantees. And because of this, you can kind of take anything that only depends on libc and drop it on another system and it kind of works. And so that was that was the idea behind libc. Uh, but libc does get new functionality as time goes on. And so you kind of want to freeze a version of libc that's very, very old to maximize the compatibility with as many Linux systems as possible. <laughs> many Linux, yeah. And that's that's where the idea from many Linux comes from. So the, the original spec of many Linux one was to build on a very, very old version of CentOS um, and take any of the dynamic links and stitch them into the wheel itself, and then they're no longer dynamic linking, they're R, what's called RPath linking, so they're linking relative to their shared object file, so they can find shared objects inside the wheel and basically bundle that up and distribute it. Um, and I'm gonna show you an example of that in a sec. So this is the PyCurl shared object that we got from unzipping that Linux x86-64 wheel. Uh, so let's take another package that I have written. Let's actually rmrf curl and pycurl star to get rid of that stuff. Um, I am going to do pip download oniguru ma cfi, which is a uh, library that I wrote. Um, I actually downloaded some other stuff as well. We don't need the cffi wheel or the pyc parser wheel. Uh, we're just going to look at this uh, oniguru ma, which means like, container or something like that? I don't know. Uh, it's Japanese. I don't know Japanese. Uh, what happened there? Why did it not unzip? Oh, we need to be in here. Um, so this uh, Onigurama package, you'll notice that it unzipped this .libs directory, and we have libonig in here. And this is the actual library that Onigurama is wrapping. But, uh, and, and when I built this from source, it dynamically linked against this. But then the many Linux machinery, which we'll show in a second, took the dynamic linked stuff and moved the system libraries next to the part that I'm distributing, bundled that up in the wheel file for me, and used our path to stitch this thing here so that it references the right thing. So if we do LDD on this guy here, you'll notice that it is linking uh, relative to where um, it's accessing stuff. And there's, you know, it actually added this special little hash in here to make sure that it doesn't collide with the system libraries. Um, and yeah, so it accessed this relative via this .libs directory, and that .libs directory is distributed with the wheel itself. So basically, we can't dynamic link, so instead of dynamic linking, we're gonna grab the system library, stick it into that zip, and then upload all of that together. Now, if you, you know, you have a bit of a security mind here, this might alarm you because you're distributing binary components that you don't really have good visibility into auditing. So for instance, let's say, you know, we stitched up this wheel here. We would install all of these things uh, and kind of stitch them into that zip and ship that zip off, including 
things like you know libssl that frequently has updates for security libcrypto which is i guess part of libssl um, you know all sorts of stuff that may be security sensitive libraries but you don't have good visibility into those shared objects because they're just you know they're just another file in that zip that gets pushed around um, and you don't really have a good way to rebuild them either so if you know if for some reason there was a vulnerability in this library here I would have to rebuild the whole wheel and make a full new release to give people a new many Linux wheel that has you know, the proper versions of this. And so there are some downsides to this. Uh, but now I wanna show you how you would go about building one of these, which is kind of the last part of this. And for that, I'm going to clone that library that I just showed you. Um, actually, we just clone another one. Um, another one. No, yeah, well, no, we'll do that one. Only guru ma CFFI. And the way these get built is by using a very, very old version of CentOS, which lives in a particular Docker image. And everything has kind of been standardized around this Docker image. Um, I'm just specifically talking about many Linux one here. There have been further standards after that, and they change a little bit. And we'll talk a little bit more about them at the end. And so the way that I have done this for Onigurumas CFFI is I have a special build many Linux wheels script and I have this separated because um, there's some complicated stuff that I have to do. I basically have to build the library that I'm wrapping from source. And so I am making a Docker file. In this case, um, we can actually, we'll just do it manually. So this is the menu Linux one image, Docker pull this. And building menu Linux wheels happens inside of this. And it's a particular, it's a, it's a pretty big image. So it takes a while to pull. Um, and let's just run that. Uh, it takes a little while. Okay, there we go. RMTI this bash. And inside of this, we have pip. Um, well, no, we don't have pip because it lives inside ops Python. And then whatever Python version you're building for. So let's say we're building for 3.6, for example. Uh, and then we have pip here. Um, and the first step of making a many Linux wheel is to start this Docker image. The second step is to build a wheel as normal. So if I did pip wheel, uh, I'm going to do this so it forces it to build it from source, no binary all. Uh, let's do edit distance s, for example. So this will build a wheel uh, as normal, but inside of this really, really old version of CentOS. And, uh, huh. oh. Why did it, oh, it tried to build everything. Uh, no depths, we just want this particular wheel. We don't really care about the dependencies here. Uh, okay, cool. So now we have our wheel here. You can see we have edit distance S and it's Linux x86-64. As I talked about before, PyPI does not allow us to upload wheels that look like this. So the next step of this process is to take a tool called audit wheel and audit wheel is kind of this, this special many Linux machinery that takes an input wheel and does that special zip stitching and RPAT stitching that I talked about earlier, and then produces a new wheel that, um, that has the proper tags and, and stuff like that. And so we're gonna use audit wheel repair, audit wheel repair, edit distance S, and this is going to write out a new wheel. Where did it write it? into wheelhouse uh, and you can see here it has a special different tag here now this tag is a little bit weird um, the many Linux one is where we started at and this is saying you know this is the particular standardized version the newer versions of audit wheel will also tack on this other tag here this many Linux 2.5 and what this 2.5 ref refers to is the glibc version so the the GNU libc symbol version um, and this is saying, you know, anything newer than glibc 2.5 should be able to run this. Um, and that's a little bit newer part of the standard. I guess I introduced this earlier than I <laughs> meant to. And then you can take this wheel file and upload it to PyPI, and it, um, you know, can be installed on a bunch of different Linux systems. Now, note that this is very specific to glibc, so if you don't have glibc, you won't be able to install these. One example of this is... Uh, Alpine, for, exam for example, which uses Muscle Z. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's M-U-S-L. Um, 
And right now there isn't a completed standard for having a mini Linux like thing for muscle C or they're in the process of standardizing that. So there will be a many Linux equivalent, but for a different libc type, uh, mostly because of the popularity of Alpine and Docker. Um, cool. The last part of this that I want to talk about is the different standards. So the first one that came out was many Linux one, and this happened, and I don't even remember, like somewhere around 2010-ish. Many Linux one pep. Uh, 2016. Okay, I'm I'm a little bit off here. Um, so this was kind of the first version that that um did that. And at the time, the version of CentOS that's used here, I actually it's a cat at C O S release. Uh, doesn't help me. <laughs> How do I know what version this is? Uh, is there a thing in here? Red Hat release, that's what I was looking for. Okay, yeah, so this is CentOS 5.11, which is really, really old and super end of life now. Um, they decided to update this, and that was many Linux one. They decided to update this at some point. Is this the further path? No, this is the future one. Where's the old ones? They decided to update this later on and made many Linux 2010. The idea being, uh, if we froze Linux at 20 at the year 2010, uh, what would what would this look like? And so this was an, another updated version of CentOS, and this was the 2010 version of many Linux one. Uh, and then there was a 2014 version, and now we have the modern version, which just lists the glibc version. Um, so that's where we got that 2.5 that we saw here earlier. This is kind of the the modern version of many Linux, which should have you know, infinite future compatibility, uh, assuming glibc maintains its backward compatibility as it does. Um, the last thing that I wanna talk about, there are some situations where you may not want to install many Linux wheels. Um, for instance, if you're at a company that's particularly security minded and you don't, you know, your security team is not comfortable with this our path stitching and bundling of or vendoring of uh, shared objects and all that other kind of screwy stuff. Um, you can turn off many Linux, and this is actually talked about in this original pep here. Uh, Linux.py. Yeah, here we go. So the many Linux machinery attempts to import this underscore many Linux uh, thing. And then it looks for a particular attribute on this um, module here. So if you install a global many Linux.py file that sets this Boolean to false, um, it can turn off the many Linux machinery for you. Now that's a little bit fiddly. So I have gone ahead and made a package for this called no many Linux, which simplifies this for you. Um, it, you can basically install this package and it sets up that same ManyLinux.py file and prevents installation of ManyLinux for you. Um, this is a little bit outdated. It, it also addresses the glibc uh, forward compatibility stuff as well. And the readme talks a little bit more about the uh, reasons why you might want to do this, the security stuff that I talked about before. Uh, and the, the implementation of this is actually very, very simple. Yeah, it's that same many Linux.py file that I talked about before. It has those booleans for each of the many Linux standards that happened. And it also has this many Linux compatible um, function, which talks about the glibc versions. So this, this disables all of the many Linux standards. Anyway, that's many Linux. Hopefully this was interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.